To be able to receive from God, you have to stay patient. It gets even harder with the pressure from family, friends, and acquaintances. The desire to feel among gets even stronger in your heart, and this could make you lose focus of your purpose in God. The world would bring all its allures and riches to entice you. The devil will, one way or the other, do everything possible to tempt you so that you may fall victim to his trap. Unfortunately, so many believers have fallen for the trick of the devil, all because of their quest to gain material and financial wealth. So many go as far as selling their soul to the devil just to achieve fame and fortune at the detriment of their soul. This is why you need to stay focused. Don't be distracted by the things of the world. If the devil could not spare our Lord Jesus and tempted him three times, even after Jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days and nights in the wilderness, then the devil can do whatsoever to try to bring you down, even the very elect of God. So whatever you want or whatever you desire, you must make sure it does not take the place of God in your heart. Nothing you need or desire must be bigger than the love of God in your heart, and this is why you must learn to wait patiently and stay calm, because God will grant you your heart's desires at the right time and the right moment. So stay strong. Don't be discouraged. Isaiah 7 verse 4 says, Say to him, Be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of Rezin and Aram and the son of Remaliah. God, through his word, is always ready to give you that assurance when you stay calm in him. God does not sleep, not slumber. God knows all and sees all. He knows the situation you're passing through. Ultimately, God knows what you need. Sometimes, as humans, we feel that we know what is right or wrong for us. Yes, we may be right about needing something, but the timing is also important. God knows the right time to grant our request. Remember that God created us in the first place. He knows what is right or wrong for us. He will never grant you a request that's going to hurt or kill you. It is our greed and quest to be successful at all costs that makes us fall into the pit trap of the devil. The devil is a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. The devil can never grant you your request without putting a clause that would make you go against the will of God. When you achieve success fraudulently and diabolically, you can never have the peace of God in your heart. You become afraid. You will continue to please the devil until he has stripped you of your soul and then you are left to his mercy to do as he likes. This is one of the reasons God sent his son to die for the sin of the world, so that he can liberate us from the oppression of the devil and his agent, and through God, we have that hope and grace that whatever we ask of him, he will do it. Psalm 50 verse 15 says, and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. God is willing to answer you when you call. And this is why he said in Matthew 11, verse 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. God is ready to give you that rest you deserve. All he wants is for you to acknowledge his presence in your life. You have to trust God. Remaining calm in God entails that you trust in His will and purpose for your life. Staying calm even when things are rough and when the future looks bleak is a great sign that you trust in God and that He will deliver and grant you whatever you ask for. It is important to stay calm even amid a storm. It sounds incredulous, that when a storm is raging and destroying things, you should be completely calm. An example of this is seen when Jesus was sleeping at the bottom of the boat amid a raging storm. Such was the confidence of Jesus that he felt so totally at peace when faced with life and death situation. 
The disciple continued to do everything possible to weather the storm and could do nothing until they remembered they had the master in the boat. Mark 4 verse 39 to 40 says that he got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? There are so many important lessons to learn from that story. One of them is that just like the disciples, we as Christians today try all possible human means and ways to receive things from God or try to still the storm in our lives by ourselves. We need to understand that on our own, we can't make it or do things. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to guide and lead you. Only then can you achieve true, lasting success in God. The second lesson is that just like the disciple, we're guilty of turning to God only when we've run out of resources or when we don't know what to do anymore. This should not be the case. The first thing to do when faced with the storms of life is to turn to God. He alone can calm the storm. Human effort will fail, and people you put your trust in to get you out of that predicament will let you down. However, we have a father who can never fail you. He is the rock of ages, and he will surely make a way for you where there seems to be no way. When faced with situations and challenges of life, you must turn to God and remain calm. Stay strong. Stay vigilant. Don't relent on His promises. Continue to have that strong faith that God can do what you expect of Him. Keep praying and trusting God for that great miracle. Don't give up. When we wait on God to grant us whatever we need, we must continue to stand steadfast in Him. One way to do this is to keep seeking God through prayer and the study of His words. It is through the power of prayer and studying God's word that we have assurances in Him that He would strengthen your faith the more to be calm and patient, even in the midst of the storm. Staying calm and patient in God means you do not give in to getting persuaded to do all things that are against the will of God. Staying calm in God means you are a witness for God, and you know and trust God no matter what you're going through. When you stay calm in God, you become acquainted with the Word of God, and you have the confidence to lean on His promises that are in His Word. You will get to understand the life God has for you and how willing He is to sustain and bless His children and forgive and renew your life. Instead of crying and wallowing in self-pity and shame, why don't you lift your eyes to God and call on His name? Psalm 33 verse 20 to 23 says, We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. As believers, we need to know that there will be trying times, but instead of dwelling on the problem, we need to stand firm and turn to God in a quiet place even amid the storm. There is a saying that sometimes God calms the storm, sometimes He lets the storm rage and calms His child. In conclusion, it's important to stay patient and wait on the promise of God, especially when it seems no help is coming forth your way. This is when you dig deeper into God and seek the face of God through prayers and in the study of His Word. He will surely grant you your heart's desires. So keep trusting Him.